Yes. So in the spirit of non-judgment, like the gazelle on the plains of Africa, when the aggressor comes to kill me, I just let him? No judgment? Yeah, the Aborigines over in um, Australia, in that book, uh, Mutant Message Down Under, the Marlo Morgan, uh, she was very well aware that every situation was like a telepathic encounter. And she talks in that book about how they would like search for food, kind of, and then... teach our civilization, that's okay? Um, you can't really teach civilizations anything because civilizations were made up by the ego, so you, and you can't teach the ego. So how will we unwind what we've got started? Well, that's that's a process of forgiveness in the sense of um, uh, when when you start to see every situation is just a situation of thoughts, and even like Marlowe Morgan was talking about how when the Aborigines would go out sometimes for days without food, and then it would be almost like this, this animal would come and give itself over, you know, and they were all aware that, that the animal was doing that in, in a sense of, it was a loving thing, like so out of love. Can we people to allow ourselves to be killed when the aggressor shows? Like when a warring faction comes to take our resources, can we just lay down? Well, Will that I, solve anything? I would not say teach the people, but I know for myself that, that Jesus taught defenselessness, you know, if someone asks for your cloak, your coat, give him your cloak as well. If someone smites you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. That's a high teaching. And I've never really been so concerned about teaching the people. I've, I feel like the best way for me to teach the people is to demonstrate it and put it in action. And that's what I've did, given my life over. When, when there was one time when someone was talking about uh, uh, suing me uh, a number of years ago, and, uh, and I was talking to my biological father, and he was... He was saying, you know, you're just taking this defenselessness a little too far. Uh, you're, you're just a little too uh, relaxed and defenseless for my liking. And I said, what do you mean? How? They were raised Christian. I said, you know, judge not, turn the other cheek, you know, offer your cloak as well. I said, I'm just following Jesus. He's a great example. He said, you know, actually, if you don't make a case here and defend yourself, then people are going to assume that you're guilty. Uh, because you're not defending yourself, and I said, I just can't, I can't think that way. I'm just sorry. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna start defending myself because I think other people will think that I'm guilty. You know, I'm really not interested in what what other people think. I need, I've got enough work working on my own consciousness to be concerned about other people. So he said, you, know, you honestly are not going to uh, to defend yourself. I said, no. I think I'm, I'm just going to pray on this, and I have a feeling the spirit's just going to write kind letters and emails and just extend love. I, <laughs> I could see it going that way. That's going to be the answer. And sure enough, that's what happened. It was just through emails and extending love and so on and so forth. And then there was no threat. You know, it was an imaginary, hypothetical threat. And I see that for myself, that when things have come where people have seemed to take something or or do this or that, you know, I just feel like it's part of the divine perfection. Uh, I like that Les Miserables, you know, the whole premise at the beginning, they have the, they got the priest there, and then this Hugh Jackman plays the man who, who seems to go off with a bag full of silver and gets caught. And then he comes back there, you know, and he's just, like really shaking because here's the priest and it's like, oh, you forgot this candle holder over here and you forgot this. As the, the nuns are all like, what are you doing? The priest's like, yeah, you forgot this too. It was almost like it was all a scene to say with the police right there, you know, the police are like, shall we arrest him? We caught this man and it's got a sack full of your silver from the whatever, the church or rectory, whatever they think. And the priest was like, oh no, you forgot the candle holders too and everything. I love that. That's teaching abundance. That's teaching innocence. That's not teaching, you know, okay, it was him, and we'll try to reform him somehow. That priest was living in the moment of the glory of God and would not dare pin a speck of guilt or a speck of judgment on that one, knowing that this would be a huge lesson, and that's the lesson that, that, that the main character, Hugh Jackman, had to learn through countless 
That's what the whole movie's about, trying to accept that innocence for himself. So I, I don't I don't really worry about teaching civilization. I have I have I don't know, somewhere up into the hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of these kind of teachings on the internet that people can access freely. MP3s and YouTubes, little forgiveness worksheets, uh, we call them instruments for peace. I've spent a quarter of a century teaching what I would learn. And the only reason I was speaking and sharing and extending wasn't to try to teach civilization anything or teach anybody anything. It was for me to really live it myself. So that it's, I could be like the priest in Les Miserables, that if somebody came and, and was going to take it, you know, I could say, great, you know, and not, not try to hold and keep things. And, and really follow the, the discernment and the guidance of the spirit, because to me that's the spirit of love. And, and, and the spirit of love has nothing to defend. When we really are aligned with love, then we, there's, there's just nothing to defend. Somebody's coming, and they're going to take it. So you can't teach them any better. It's in the script. Right. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's not about clinging to anything. It's really about claiming your inheritance of your eternal, infinite nature. So in that moment of a seeming threat, where does your mind go? It's, it's a really, it's, it's an extraordinary opportunity for you to practice, for you to awaken. It's practical application. That's, that's what brings about the transformation. One percent principle, 99 percent practice. Thank you.